is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour, or substance and behaviour. For me, my substance was alcohol and my behaviour, workaholic relationships, materialism, all the good things that consumers are encouraged to enjoy. And what happened to me? Well, I enjoyed them too much maybe, or maybe I just became dependent on something outside me to change the way I felt. And it's interesting, I've just come back from a meeting of AA, that's Alcoholics Anonymous, the fellowship which uh, keeps me sober on a daily basis, and the, to the topic today, it was a topic meeting, where somebody speaks for five minutes, and then everybody gets a chance to share, or be picked to share. We don't have any choice in that particular aspect of it. But the subject this morning was all about self-worth, and all my life I wondered about self-worth, or did I? Well, the language of recovery, I've only just really come to understand it as I've got into recovery over the last few years, and my understanding about life was quite dismal when I look back now. I'm not complaining, it was just the way it was, so driven by a thousand forms of fixing myself, and underneath that a great big chunk of fear about not being good enough, not being worthy of being here, and trying and striving my best to be perfect, and realising eventually, as I broke down in the end, that perfect was never going to happen. Well, there you go. And, you know, the person sharing today all about self-worth had been dumped unceremoniously by their girlfriend as not being good enough. And what a tragedy that was, because it knocks us for six, especially when we're young. And truthfully, I never, I never was never around long enough to get the dump. I was off into the, into the wild blue yonder before I could be dumped, because I knew I probably would be, because I wasn't good enough. And these days I realise that self-worth is an inside job, just being able to be ourselves and understand how we get to be okay with living in the moment of now is quite difficult because if we try and measure self-worth well how do we do it? I'll ask myself the question a bit later in this video so what, get me, what got me sober? yes the fellowship of AA but before I got there family, friends, society kept me alive long enough to get some sort of clarity that drinking was killing me and trying to think my way out of the problem use my self-determination, my self-will, to the point of obsession, just kept me on the path of more alcohol, more fixing and more misery. So these days, uh, <laughs> the path is quite different. A path trodden with a sober head doesn't mean it's going to be all bed, a bed of roses. But what, it tell, what I know on a daily basis is probably how I'm feeling, understanding what it is to feel life again, rather than think it think I'll be alright if I do this, think I'll be alright if I do that. It's all about being in touch with and embracing all that I feel on a daily basis. So it's not pushing my feelings away or trying to make them different, it's knowing what they are and what I may do in terms of action so my attitude and behaviour changes and as a consequence then maybe I feel like I am worth it, even when it's the hardest of days. Not easy, because it's not a con, it's not a trick, it's not a behavioural thinking device. It's actually acknowledging my feelings on a daily basis. So I guess that's where cognitive behavioural therapy hopes to go, but I don't know. I need to know my feelings are real and I need to acknowledge them and find out, I suppose, a little bit of the why of them, but not dwell on it, but ask myself the question, in humility, what can I do next to improve my situation? And sometimes it might be just to sit still long enough, or to listen to other people who've got the wisdom to show me the way. So for me, uh, my video is all about recovery, share a bit about AA, uh, their lit the literature of AA, their literature, our literature, and how it helps me on a daily basis. And so I'll start with the AA preamble, statement of intent. What is AA there to, there to do? It's not there to fix us. It's just there to help us live in one day, this one. <coughs> Excuse me. So, an early meeting this morning, and it's cold out there, hence the jumpers. 
So, Alcoholics Anonymous. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So the key sentences in there for me and why I do these videos. Uh, only requirement for membership is a d desire to stop drinking. So that was the only reason I got in there. There were no rules which said you had to do anything else but have a desire. And I did have a desire some of the time to stop. And the other thing is the primary purpose is to stay sober and help others. So when people can't get to meetings, I, that is the reason why I started these videos. When I was in a treatment outpatient centre in Soho, in London, UK, where I did a lot of my uh, entertaining and drinking, Soho being the uh, nightlife place in the centre of London. So clubs and all sorts going on there. But uh, in the end, why did I go back there? At, well, for one reason, sobriety. That's where the treatment facility was with the National Health Service. And I was very lucky to be there as an outpatient going twice a week for an hour. And that gave me, I suppose, a framework. And then the fellowship on top, the fellowship of AA, kept me on track. And it does that every day, simply by turning up and listening, most of all, and then sharing, if it feels appropriate to do so, about what's happening for me today. So there we are. And daily reflections for today. This book covers one of the steps each month. 12 steps of action for a person. 12 steps to change our attitude and behaviour daily and for and it's step two this month February all about finding a higher power which can help us be restored to sanity but again just for today so for February 7th just flick back to the right page a path to faith true, humi true humility and an open mind can lead us to faith and every AA meeting is an assurance that God will restore us to sanity if we rightly relate ourselves to him and for me, God is truth, God works through people, and God is love. And beyond that, I can't define God. It's as we understand a higher power. So truth helps me greatly on a daily basis. And it goes on to say, my last drunk had landed me in the hospital, to totally broken, and it was for me more than once. It was then that I was able to see my past float in front of me. I realized that through drinking, I'd lived every nightmare I'd ever had. My own self-will and obsession to drink have driven me into a dark pit of hallucinations, blackout and despair. Finally beaten, I asked for God's help. His presence told me to believe. My obsession for alcohol was taken away and my paranoia has since been lifted. I am no longer afraid. I know life is healthy and sane. And for me, it's simply a day at a time. And when I ask for God's help, I ask for the help from others. Please help me understand life today. What is the truth of what is going on? So if I'm able to listen to people and find out what the real truth is, not what I think it is, uh, more about how I feel and the truth of now, I have a, an opportunity to understand my self-worth, which is simply, I too have a right to be here and to keep on learning what life can be. And the measures for me are how to love people, be loved back and do something useful no matter, no matter what it is so for me at the end of these videos uh, the serenity prayer saves me when I don't know how to save myself when things get tough and it goes like this God, all in good conscience to a power of your understanding which is not yourself really God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference is for today and that's just because I have choices when I'm sober. And uh, anybody out there who has been an addict or is in recovery from addiction to substance or behaviour knows just how hard it is and that life keeps on happening a day at a time and the gift of recovery if you like is a double-edged sword 
some of the time it's good and some of the t time it's bad. Some of the time it's absolutely wonderful and some of the time it's absolutely depressing. So it can be all or nothing and it often is for us who have been in addiction when it comes to recovery because we're still trying to get our senses back and if it's taken a long time to recognize the addictions then it can take a long time to find some sort of peace of mind. And when we're feeling a struggle inside us about how to be or who we are we try and grasp and find an identity that we can live with long enough to get some more recovery time and that's the absolute gift for me when I go to the fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous. I don't speak for AA, I just speak for me and my recovery and how I'm doing on a daily basis and share, share some of the wisdom, experience, strength and hope I get along the way. And part of that, I, I try to slow myself down into the moment of now which is just trying to be here present in the, this one moment and make it count for me. And the way I do that is sharing. And uh, at, the, at the beginning of every meeting of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, I go to, there is a preamble. And it helps me slow down and understand what I'm trying to do on a daily basis. And it goes like this. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other. That they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes, and it certainly doesn't endorse or oppose my videos as a body. Although some people are for them and some people are against them, that's just the way of life. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And that's partly what I do here. <coughs> so there is a selfish motive in what I'm doing. It's to get me centred in each time I wake up. To ask myself, how am I feeling today? Why? What can I do? And at the moment I've been through uh, the hoops, if you like, the ups and downs of life. And that is being a part of life, living society, community, in a relationship, out of a relationship. And what happens as we go along? We fill ourselves with things which are important to us, which we love. And then somet sometimes that love or that relationship fails. And I guess what we need to learn is that there is no blame attached. And that if we're involved with people who are in recovery, we are, we are simply in recovery a day at a time. And we're dealing with quite a lot of things going on. So I use or utilize the literature of AA the 12 steps and 12 traditions. The 12 steps is an action program uh, for recovery. The 12 traditions about the fellowship and how it holds itself together without, we, without us arguing, if you like, or falling out. But the trouble is, as human beings, we will fall out from time to time. It's just the way of life. And I use this book, The Daily Reflections, as well. And in The Daily Reflections, each month it, it focuses on one of the 12 steps of action and one of the 12 traditions. So it's almost like a, it's listening to the stories and wisdom of other people always, which give, gives me a guide to what is going on inside me. And, you know, we are so similar in our addictions, yet so different. We are all unique, authentic people, and that's simply the way it is, because we're all on our own personal journey. And we have to balance our personal journey with the people around us and how we actually connect with other people outside fellowship in our family, society and community. And the best way, obviously, for me, for me only, and maybe for many more, is to be sober so we can keep on learning how to be ourselves and also how to be with other people. And it's most important because otherwise we become selfish and self-obsessed. And uh, why do I do these videos? To avoid being selfish and self-obsessed and to see how other people are dealing with their recovery. And I get a lot of mail and um, sponsorship is coming up as a, a concern at the moment for, for one or two people I know and also people I know around here. And sponsorship really is something where we rely on the other person to give us a bit of guidance on a one-to-one -one basis. But always, always we need to lean hard on the fellowship as the, the multitude of people who go share experience, strength and hope in meetings and make life work one day at a time. So sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's joyful, and sometimes it's sad. Almost like a poem there. But uh, I'll just read a bit from the Daily Reflections for today. Well, don't forget, it's about step two. And well, before I do that, I'll just cover step two very briefly again, because it's, it's really important. 
Step two, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. What, what can we believe in? AA does not demand belief. Twelve steps are only suggestions. Importance of an open mind. Variety of ways to faith. Substitution of AA as a higher power? Well, I don't know. There are so many higher powers. I just need to listen to them and see them and hear the wisdom and make some use of it. Plight of the disillusioned. Anybody who's coming into recovery has almost certainly given up on life. Roadblocks of indifference and prejudice. We have indifference inside us for ourselves. So how can we cherish others? Prejudice. Prejudice against ourselves, so we're judging the world as we judge ourselves too. The lost faith found in AA. Well, I've got my faith back in human nature, mine and others, and that we're all on the same path and we're all equal and we all are very capable of making good or bad choices. Problems of intellectuality and self-sufficiency. Well, you know, we thought our ways ourselves into it, uh, addiction. Now we feel our way out. So my best feelings, my best thinking got me into AA. My best feelings keep me on the sober path. Defiance is an outstanding characteristic of alcoholics. So for what I say here, there'll be a multitude of people who say, I don't agree with that. And why not? That's just the way it is. Step two is a rallying point to sanity, right relation to God, or in my case, good conscience and the truth. And, uh, you know, the truth for me does ab very well. The absolute truth, not my truth, not your truth, but the absolute truth of now. That's what works. Daily reflections for today, a path to faith. True humility and an open mind can lead us to faith, and every AA meeting is an assurance that God will restore us to sanity if we rightly relate ourselves to Him. And as I say, you know, God and my relationship to God is truth. Truth of now. My last drunk had landed me in hospital, totally broken. It was then that I was able to see my past, my past flows in front of me. I tried to realise that, through drinking, I had lived every nightmare I'd ever had. My own self-will and obsession to drink had driven me into a dark pit of hallucinations, blackouts and despair. Finally beaten, I asked for God's help. His presence told me to believe. My obsession for alcohol was taken away and my paranoia has since been lifted. I am no longer afraid. I know my life is healthy and safe. Well, mine is on a daily basis, and some of the things it says there, my own self will an obsession to drink have driven me into dark, a dark pit of hallucinations. Well, I didn't have hallucinations because I was in blackout, or maybe I just can't remember. But, you know, li it was a living nightmare, and I didn't know how to get out of it. And I was so against AA because it was actually the solution, and I just didn't want one. I just didn't want to live anymore. And that's the, the awful truth of what addiction does. We get to a place where either we jump off a bridge or we just jump off out of life completely. And I don't know how many times I felt that way. But something, some strand inside me, maybe it was just self-preservation, said other people know the answers. And my awakening to whatever is spiritual, which is in the moment of now for me, and uh, as God is truth, that, that is what works just for me. And I wouldn't want to. There's a big word in AA. It's called proselytize. And proselytize is the uh, speaking of faith and belief as if it were the truth. And the actual answer is, don't proselytize anything. Let people find their own faith and their own truth and their own God as they understand them. And there is no substitute, in my opinion, for finding our own way. We cannot impose it on others. I've learned that in the last few months, that even though I might have a bit of sanity, it's uh, only worth anything to me. And if I have anything going on in my life where I start to judge and criticize others, I'm got not getting my way and my self will is coming back and I can become obsessed. So step two, the rallying point, which is uh, <laughs> sanity is restoring ourselves to a place where we understand that life need not ever be the same again and that we can step out of the madness and that prayer God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference will keep me alive just one more day